Hey everyone, hope everyone's having a lovely holiday season and there's some chill music to roll us into Thursday afternoon. I'm Zandra and I'm the community manager for Charmverse. Charmverse is a Web3 community platform for managing members, coordinating tasks, facilitating decisions, and holding each other accountable. Members sign in with crypto wallets and gain access via community tokens and NFTs. And it brings together onboarding, payment management, proposals, project trackers, and data repositories all in one place. So today I'm joined by John and Aaron of Eli5DAO. Uh, hey, you two. Thanks for joining me. Hey, hey, thanks so much for having us. Really appreciate you, uh, the invite, and uh, looking forward Absolutely, to the chat. Absolutely, me too. Really excited to learn more about the DAO and introduce our listeners if they're not familiar. So um, I just want to start by saying, in case you're not familiar with what ELI5 stands for, it means explain it like I'm five years old, which as soon as I believe it was Aaron said that in our little chat, I was like, Oh, I love this. Break it down and make it easy to understand. And when we're talking Web3, I think that is so important. So, John, why don't you kick it off and tell us what the mission of Eli5DAO is? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Eli5DAO, thanks for the uh, kind of the acronym. You know, we're about vulnerability in Web3 and uh, just understanding tools in a, in a simple manner, almost like you're the five-year-old trying to break, you know, break your toy or something like that. So our mission is kind of like th to educate through experimentation and how we do that is testing out DAO tools. And we do those in uh, timeframes called epochs. So uh, right now, Eli5DAO is in our first epoch. We're testing out colony.io. And maybe for those who are not familiar, Colony is kind of like a platform to make DAOs on. And um, we're using that as our governance stack. So we thought it just made sense to, you know, that for, for that to be the first tool that we test out. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And I was going to I was going to say, Colony, if you go to your link tree, you can link to your governance tab, which is all on Colony. So you're abs you're actually testing it there currently. Um, very yeah, good. for sure. Awesome. So, um, Aaron, how large is the community currently, and are you accepting new members? Yeah, um, we are accepting new members. Um, it's pretty open and easy to join. We have our Discord links, and you can pop in there, and then all of our onboarding documentation actually lives on Charmverse. Um, but I think we are up to, let's see, we are up to... Um, I think we're up to 60 or 70 members in our Discord. And then as far as the epochs go, we do have limited bounties. Um, so the first epoch, we had 18 bounties available for our community members to join in. So uh, that's where we're at now. But we are, you know, ever growing because we're super new. And I think a lot of people are discovering us Um you know, here and there. So we're still growing, still open. And yeah, the, mo the more the merrier for sure. Love it. When did this project get started? How long has it been up and running? Yeah, uh, Epoch One started on November 1st, and that was kind of our official launch. Um, John, myself, and we have a, had a third founder, uh, Barry, who um, we had been working on it for probably about two months prior to that. And it's it this idea, the idea for the DAO stemmed out of um, actually, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Etienne LaRue on at over at Colony, but we had a talk in DAOs group that went for a couple of months and it kind of stemmed out of that. So and that's kind of how we get started. But yeah, we're still super new. Nice. So let's talk about how what this process looks like. So um, first of all, how do you decide what tools you're going to test? Yeah, so uh, so the first two tools as the founders, we put out just a vote on Colony. Um, like I said, we wanted to start off with Colony. So the first epoch, the members that were testing it out kind of learned about it. And in the first epoch, we're actually kind of testing out Charmverse as well, because that's where all of our documents are located on. So um, the first one, it was just like us you know, kind of thinking like pragmatically and just like layman's terms, like, okay, we want to make sure the community is aware if 
we start this DAO on this platform. Like we want to make sure that the people in the DAO know how to do that. They know how to make a proposal. They know how to make a decision and just document it. And then the second one, um, we actually got a grant for about $1,500 and uh, it was a company who reached out to us and they were interested in getting their new platform tested. So we said, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we can do this and we can vote on, um, you know, to test it out. And then they gave us a little bit more money. So if DAO members want to decide on a tool that they want to, um, you know, use or test out, then we'll do that. Each epoch is about 500 bucks. So um, right now, so kind of like, you know, we have two epochs set, but the third epoch is going to be up to uh, DAO members. They're going to, they're going to earn the we use reputation system um, in, in Colony. So they're going to earn reputations after participating in Epoch 1, and then they can make a proposal on the DAO tool that they would like to learn more about. So kind of open and, uh, you know, this is the big test. Uh, we're hoping that more people join because it's the test for us on whether decentralization is going to work or not. Um, uh, for those maybe um, who haven't used Colony, they have this reputation system. So it's almost like I call it a proof of participation. Once you complete a bounty, our bounties are on Charmburst. We're going to give people an, the equivalent amount of reputation. And then they have that like proof of participation. And then uh, they can use that to submit proposals. So yeah, I'll stop there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm curious. So you said that each... So first of all, how is the epoch set for a specific duration of time? Yes. So at least for our first epoch, it was a three month run. Um, so we have two months of testing, which we're just wrapping up here at the end of December. And then the last month is to get all of the reviews completed um, and all the bounties done. So in total, it's three months long. I believe our next epoch, we're going to try, the company had requested a quicker turnaround that's funding it, um, which is, we didn't mention that, but our the second tool we're testing is called Samudai, and it's another DAO platform. Um, and they're hoping that we can complete it in two months. So we're going to try to tighten the the timelines a little bit and see, you know, see how that goes. And then we can decide as a DAO moving forward, whether, you know, that worked or we want we want a longer duration of three months. So cool. I actually just saw Sam Udai on another Dow tooling demo recently um, that Dow House was hosting. So I'm curious yeah. to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. We're really excited to get in there and, and try it. So looking forward to it. And so I'm sorry if I missed it, but you said each epoch costs around $500. So what does, where does that 500 come from? Is that from Dow members? What is it going to? Is it from purchasing a platform for testing purposes? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we actually got two grants right now. So we have about uh, funding for about 18 months. Um, so the majority of the money is coming from grants. And we're actually looking at going down the nonprofit, you know, route, we're kind of uh, uh, strategizing which legal entity is going to be the most applicable for this. So I, I actually wrote an article on like DAOs going the nonprofit route, but we do see ourselves going down that that route. And uh, essentially, if um, you know, right now it's 500 bucks. That money goes to back to the community members. So um, the 18 bounties, we're not talking about like huge money. This isn't uh, a testing that's, uh, you know, going to be a, a salaried thing, but it's just something like you can almost think of it like an Amazon review or a Yelp review, but you're also learning a little bit along the way. I call it like a learn and earn kind of uh, a, a system. So essentially, you know, you go through two months of testing, kind of learn about a new DAO tool that's out there and then get paid for the review. And then after you kind of progress and go through a couple of epochs, you can earn up to, you know, if you do a review and then we do uh, reviews, video reviews, and then we have just somebody kind of like watching over the process. We call that person the tool program manager. So Cool. Uh, you mentioned you wrote an article recently. Where can we find that? I love giving shout outs to any articles my guests have have put out there yeah for sure um we're on uh, uh what's it called on, uh we're just decentralist.com uh, if you go on there you can go to the decentralized diary that's kind of aaron's uh, uh our blog site for kind of what we write so if you just go to the the double d with the diary on there and then uh <laughs> yeah she'll uh you'll see the uh blog site that she has and the article i recently wrote was uh just uh non-profit dow research i actually am working on part two of it right now so yeah, I just kind of want to look at the feasibility of it. And then uh, an interesting tool for those maybe who uh, have never heard about it is uh, Wrapper. 
um, I think it's W-R-A-P-P-R dot X-Y-Z. And they're very, um, they're in with like the Lex DAO and Kali DAO and stuff like that. But essentially they have an NFT that a DAO can mint. They send it to their wallet and then it helps uh, reduce some of the legal liability on, on DAOs. So just something interesting that we're looking at. Yeah, no, I would love to check it out because I think I think that's well. One, I think DAOs are fascinating, but two, nonprofits going that route kind of just makes sense in my mind. So, um, okay, so is the whole community using these tools, or do you have like sub DAOs using different tools? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, right now, it's you know you can elect in. I think we have about twenty plus members in our test colony, which is also public. Um, so if you want to check that out, we can, I think we have, we do have the link in Charmverse for the test colony, as well as our, our real Eli5 DAO on colony. It's all public. So you can you become a watcher and see what we're up to. Um, so I think, like I said, in the test DAO, I think, or test colony, we have over 20 ish uh, participants kind of testing it and putting it through uh, through lots of different trials and tribulations um, it's been a, a really awesome growing experience um, and then hopefully um, as we launch uh, epoch 2 here on january 1st we'll be able to get even more people involved um, with the new bounties and all of that um, the way we have it set up is even if you don't get a bounty, if you're interested in testing the tool, you can still join in. Um, so there's no restrictions on that. Um, it's just open to our community. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I was on, I'm going to have to grill you two on Charmverse a little bit because you're using it and I'm curious how it's working out for you. Um, so honest answers, please. These aren't staged listeners. Um, <laughs> so yeah, when I started to dig into Eli 5 DAO, I was really happy to go and see that most of the information is on Charmverse, which is fantastic that you're using that as your test platform right now. Um, so overall, how has it been working for you thus far? Yeah, so we uh, we use Charmverse actually through a recommendation through like a, a member of a DAO, uh, Wasabi over at the Coconut DAO Network. He was he was really excited about Charmverse and he's like, John, you should you should definitely take a look at this. So you know, at the time we were using like a competitor, like a Web two competitor, and we're like, hey, we really want to like we're thinking about the centralization first, so we wanted to like go in that route, and uh, Charmverse just kind of made sense to us. So. Uh, we went through it and uh, yeah, it was it was super simple to kind of transfer over all of our information. What I would like to see in Charmverse, and this is just, you know, me speaking as like somebody who started a DAO and is like, you know, was working on it. I would love to see the communication aspect of, of you know, maybe bringing in the talks into Charmverse. Um, let me give you like a more specific example. So we have a bounty board on our Charmverse page and somebody will take that bounty and like, okay, I'm going to write a review for Eli five um, on colony. I would like to see like a communication, like in there, almost like a discord within the charm verse of like, like a, a very direct communication, because sometimes I think it's like two or three clicks to get into the bounty, but you know, it's something small that I think can be integrated in the long term. But um, you know, I looked at it as an all in one spot like you have your bounties you can have your documents and everything like that like almost like you're i mean it's it's very similar to like a notion aspect where you have all of that pieces in there and then it also has the web3 where you can connect a wallet you can add your discord etc so that's what i that's what i like and that's what i'd like to see you know well you're reading our minds because we are in the process of building out a forums function so yeah, ask and you shall receive. Um, ooh, ooh, that's going to make it so awesome. Yeah, we're uh, super <laughs> excited about it. And we've been dropping little hints and kind of our weekly updates. But um, yeah, we're hoping to really do like a full on release of it uh, later in January. So please stay tuned and check back. And uh, yeah, we're really excited for that because we agree that is definitely something as an all in one tool you want in there, right? You don't want to have to be bouncing between all of these different uh, platforms. So definitely. And please, please, please. And this goes to all of our listeners as well as John and Aaron. Feature requests, feedback. We love it because we want to be building this Web3 tool for all of you, right? And what you want. So we love getting feature requests and feedback from our users. 
that's what helps us build a fantastic platform. Um, also, a shout out to Wasabi. I don't know if he's in here today, but he's fantastic. He's been a guest of mine on this in the past, and um, he's a big supporter of Charmverse, and I can't thank him enough. It's fantastic. So yeah. I'm glad that he uh, was the one to pass along Charmverse to you. Yeah, he is a great friend and a great Web3 leader and advocate, and he's just good people all around. So we love Wasabi and um, appreciate him so much. Um, I was also going to add, I I also, we've been, like John said, really loving Charmverse um, as a one-stop shop for everything that we, you know, all of our documentation. The last thing that's been really nice is the um, like web form integration. So we were able to put our, and you can go on to our Charmverse and see it, um, our uh, review form submissions directly within a page on that site. So it truly has been like a one-stop shop aside from Colony. Um, and it's all we've needed. And I think, you know, for DAOs to function and work, we need more tools like Charmverse um, to make it easy and accessible for members to find information. Because when you're spread on, you know, five different tools, sites, platforms, it gets really confusing really fast, especially for people that are new to the space. So we've been loving it. And we love that you guys are continuing the updates just to, you know, make it better and improve. So we appreciate you, you all over there. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's great to hear. And uh, yeah, like I said, even off of this, please feel free to reach out and say, hey, you know what, this would be really useful to us because, you know, we're in the process of adding, you know, Google Forms so you can embed those into stuff and, you know, Google login uh, for those people that don't quite yet have their digital wallets. So um, yeah, we're really excited about what we're building and all of you are the ones helping us get there. So Keep it coming. Um, so what kind of info are you hosting on there? I know you have some onboarding stuff, um, how, you know, about the DAO. What other kind of stuff would they see if they went to the Charmverse space? Yeah, so if uh, you went into our Charmverse space, I think you'll kind of see we have it split up. Um, in our document section, we have like our participants, like the 101, and we have like a light paper on there as well. That's that's the, the written format of, of everything Eli 5. But, you know, um, some people are readers, some people like more of the visuals. So you'll see that we have like three onboarding videos. And that's kind of what Aaron was talking about. We've embedded those so people can watch. It's only like two minutes and just kind of like a who, what, where, when and why of what it, what is Eli 5 DAO. Um, we have our official like our links on the main page. Um, we're gonna build out like a history board of all the tools that we've tested out. So, you know, we've, we've only first started our first epoch, so there's not gonna be much in there right now, but, um, and then some of our members, I'm not sure if uh, Jeff is in here, but Jeff, shout out to you, but he requested like a specific epoch um, channel for like each, so let's say we're testing out um, you know, colony or testing out charm verse, like a, just a, a channel to get caught up with. And we thought that was a really good idea that we're going to like start to implement in uh, epoch two. So, you know, just like a, a who, what, where, when, and why, if I, if I were to join this epoch, what am I, you know, what are we doing? And, and uh, we'll get that started. Yeah. Um, I just want to say we have a request to speak from Will Pedri. I will if uh, John and Aaron are up for it, for taking questions, I will get to you. But I just want to get through this next spot. If you can hang tight, and I'll, uh, and I'll get to your question and let you speak. Um, so you mentioned you're using the bounties function, which we love to hear. Um, and then how about, so are you doing all of your proposal and voting um, through Colony currently? I know you're using Snapshot for voting. So we are doing all of our like proposal governance functions on Colony since um, we're using that reputation function. Um, so though we're using the bounty board on Charmverse, we're going to be doing our payments in Colony because um, that's where all of our our treasury lives. Um, so we're kind of using we're kind of trying to integrate them both. Um, but for now, what we're going to be doing our governance on Colony. However, I don't think we realized um, the governance features that Charmverse had available. So, you know, depending on what the data size, that could definitely change in the future. Yeah, I mean, we'd love for you to check it out again, just, just to even offer feedback. And maybe if you're using Colony, what's working well there that we can implement? Or maybe we have something that works best for you. Um, and now, uh, Zandra... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. 
Uh, sorry, uh, I, we are using Snapshot too. We've uh, integrated that, and that's where we're gonna. We're just using that for the next tool. Um, Snapshot's kind of good because it's like the off-chain solution, but it's also you can uh, almost do like a rank choice voting where DAO members can you know put all of their DAO tools that they're interested in, and then we can just rank choice vote them. Versus like a proposal on Colony, they don't have the. Uh, you can make a proposal, but it just it just flows a little bit better on. Uh, snapshot and then what we can do is just like finalize that on uh, colony because everything on colony does go to the blockchain so yeah i just wanted to point that out but you are right we have a snapshot in colony so yeah i saw snapshot listed on the link tree um so i wanted to i knew that you were using it in some form but yeah the charm first proposal builder is great because you can kind of draft stuff privately push it public and then there's a spot where you can discuss it among the community if people wanted to make edits or suggestions to it um, and then you can even add polls in there. If you just wanted a quick temperature check before sending anything to an official vote, you have the capability to do that. And then you can vote within Charmverse or you can send it to Snapshot from Charmverse. So just in case you weren't aware of some of these capabilities as we're talking about this and as you're testing out the tool. Um, and again, we can, I can walk you through some of that after this um, Twitter space. I'd be happy to talk through it as well. So just want to make sure we're on the same page with what you could do all in one tool. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And um, one of, I will say one of the, we love Colony, but one of the um, limitations at this point is there's only like a yes, no kind of functionality for proposals or decisions. Um, so having the option, you know, to do a poll or, um, like John was saying, ranked choice voting or something that, you know, I don't see why we couldn't utilize the Charmverse tools for that. So we'd love to, to learn more and see that in action. Yeah, we'll have to set something up after this. Um, how about token gating? Have you tested that out at all? So uh, we, we're following kind of the Bankless DAO model with the L1, L2, and L3. Um, our tokens for Eli5 um, are just used for reputation. So um, they're locked on the system. And then the $500 I was talking about is usually paid to us in a stable coin. So um, on uh, Charmverse specifically, to get back to the question, um, we're breaking down um, access to those bounties by level one, level two, and level three. I hope that makes sense. So like everybody that joins the Charmverse page and that um, wants to participate in an epoch, they would become a level one and they can claim a bounty on that level. And then um, once you participate in one epoch, let's say you've tested out Colony, I wrote my personal review, almost like my Amazon review or my Yelp review, and now I get that reputation in Colony. We'll give that person, uh, I'm sorry, they'll get reputation in the system and they can nominate themselves to be an L2 and that will open up additional bounties that they could do. So, you know, I would say kind of like the L1 is like, I'm writing a review. The level two is like, I can, um, we call it like quality control. We just don't want reviews that just say like, this was good or this was bad. Like, <laughs> you know, we want people just to be like, we want their honest opinion and, over the two months, you'll see people testing and, 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 and uh, you know, really trying these things out. So that's kind of like a level two. And then a level three is kind of like the tool program manager. They're running that epoch for the two to three months. So, you know, since this is our first, our first time, um, you know, everyone that's testing it out right now is a level one in Charmverse and they're kind of, you know, locked to level one. But during epoch two, we're going to have uh, multiple people essentially you know, be able to nominate themselves to become L2s and then more bounties will be open and hopefully naturally that just decentralizes us. So, yeah, cool. It's always, a f it's always fun to hear from DAOs that are kind of up getting up and running. So you're learning as you're going and, and really figuring out the process as you go. So um, I'm always fascinated to see how it's going and then always curious to check in in another month or three to say, okay, so what have you learned and what are you doing differently and what worked well, you know, because DAOs in general, Web3 in general is also new. So uh, we're in it together. So you mentioned tokens that are really more reputation based because um, I wanted to talk a bit governance. So token is used for reputation within your DAO. And then you said as far as submitting 
like a proposal. Who can submit a proposal? Do you have to be an L2 or? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now, only the three founders have reputation on the real Eli5 colony. But once people start getting paid at the end of this first epoch, they will become contributors at that point and then be, be able to put forward proposals and decisions. Um, so it's we're getting closer and we're really looking forward to that. Like we said, um, one of the things when we were putting this DAO together was we had the decentralization piece in the back of our mind from the get-go um, so that we could get there as quickly as possible in a way that made sense. Um, so once people get paid, they'll get paid reputation and also in stable coins. And at that point, um, it'll be more than just three of us uh, putting proposals forward and making decisions. So we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, I bet. Um, so I don't know if you're willing, I mean, you've mentioned that you are reviewing Colony currently and Charmverse, of course, so eagerly awaiting those reviews. Um, any others that you can share that you're currently reviewing or is that it for right now because it is your first epoch? So, uh, technically we've had, uh, Colony is our first, uh, epoch. Uh, Sammy Die is our second e uh, second epoch, and then we've been kind of testing Charmverse like on the side because naturally people are going through the website to learn about the 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 DAO. So we're actually kind of testing like Charmverse, but not officially. But um, uh, the third epoch though is up to DAO members. Um, they're going to essentially uh, vote on it. But uh, we we have had companies reach out to us, and you know uh, we were talking about our epochs. They're three months right now. And I think a lot of companies, let's say, for example, uh, we'll just use Charmverse, I guess. Let's say we did an epoch on Charmverse for three months, but Charmverse puts out a new feature. We've had companies want to do like a sprint epoch where like we have 10 members, like just use a specific, um, you know, uh, tool or specific item that they've just installed or integrated into their application that they want tested. So we've had a couple of people reach out to us and, and maybe that's like, you know, we haven't nailed down the, the specifics of it, but it's like a hundred bucks and we're just, uh, you know, testing it for a week and, you know, members are getting paid 10 bucks or something like that for their review. And they just want that kind of that quick uh, sprint, you know, that a lot of, a lot of these big tech companies are using. So um, we've had a couple reach out to us and then a few, um, tools that we've seen naturally like colony also doesn't have that communication piece so i don't know when a new proposal comes up unless i sign into my account and look at these things so we've had some members like actually recommend like hey we want to we want to see if we can get something like that's going to give us notifications and there are a couple of companies out there so i think it's it's going to be very interesting to see where this goes couple things on this. So Charmverse, you can get notifications for any proposal and send them out to your community. Um, so if you have a proposal or you have a document that someone commented on, they can tag you. And in your Nexus, you'll get a notification saying, here's tasks that you know need to be tended to. It could be signatures from your multi-sig wallet that are needed or yeah, a proposal that's been submitted or this vote needs to be voted on. So I feel like you really need to check out some of these other tools that you haven't yet with Charmverse. And again, I'm not trying to just plug Charmverse, but because we're talking about it, it just makes, seems to make sense that we should follow up on that. Um, and I also love what you were saying about these sprints as far as tool testing in a shorter amount of time. Um, that makes so much sense because, for example, say we release the forums, right? It could be really great to say, hey, John and Aaron, can you just put your team on this and really you know, find any weird bugs or something we missed or, you know, just that feedback. Again, it makes so much sense when you're deploying a new feature. Yeah. And uh, for Colony, oh, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. No, you're good. Go for it. I was going to say for Colony, we've had, you know, even though we're looking at this and explaining it in a simple way, I think we found two or three just bugs that the team has never found about. And they actually came into our discord and they're like, hey, we've, We've appreciated this so much and like that's creating value for these companies, but they were like giving us some alpha on their discord. Like these are the things that are coming out. And I just think it's been really useful. And uh, it's also just, it's useful for the company, but it's also for useful for the people that are participating in the epochs because they're, they're almost becoming like 
the consultants or the leaders of these tools. And they're just, in my, in my opinion, somebody that can use an advanced tool like Charmverse, but still explain it in a simple way to somebody who's new to Web3. Those are the people that are going to be the leaders in the future. And they can help create relationships, help create connections. So I'm going to stop there because I'm going to keep going. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, those are the people I really think that we're making the leaders of Web3 in this, in a simple to understand manner. So I love that. Aaron, what were you going to say? I do want to come back to that, John, what you just said. But Aaron, what would you say? Um, what were you we just talking about? You were going to chime in. Yeah, no, I was just going to kind of echo a little bit about what John was saying. And um, I, I, to be honest, that was such inspiring words from John. I can't even remember. So <laughs> she, 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 <laughs> oh God, I'm leaving now. This has been, yeah, this has been a great space. <laughs> Um, I love that you're saying you're, you're building the leaders of Web3. Um, because like I said, Web3 can be a really intimidating space. And once you get into it, you find a lot of people are really friendly. They're ready to network. They're ready to collaborate and share knowledge. But it can be a really intimidating space. So to make it a comfortable space like you're doing, um, to break down these terms and these tools, because you could go onto a site and and read all about it and still think, I still don't understand what this is if you're not Web3 native at all. Um, so I think building the leaders that maybe are so unassuming right now, but as soon as you break it down for them and make it a more welcoming, comfortable space for them to be in, it could be a total game changer and make it go far more mainstream than it is currently. Yeah, and I hope that... Uh... You know, we're actually examples here. We don't know everything that Charmverse offers and we haven't tried everything, but I mean, that's that's a great way just to like, you know, to get into these things and learn about them and get your hands, get your hands dirty in the playground, I guess. Absolutely. I feel so fortunate to, I was just saying this to our co-founder Alex today on a meeting. I said, I feel so fortunate to hold these spaces because I get to talk to people like you two about really cool projects. And I learn so much about not only your project, but just things about Web3 that I don't know. I mean, it's an ever changing, fast paced environment. You can't possibly know everything. So to have someone that's an expert on some of these tools to break it down for me or for you to say, oh, we're trying to do this and me to say, oh, well, you can do that with a proposal builder. You know, it's just Let's help one another um, get that much further and that much faster in Web3. So I love, I love what you're doing. Um, do you have specific tools, types of tools you want to focus on? Or are you kind of open to anything? Like you're doing a couple DAO platforms, um, governance. Do you have like favorites that you kind of want to geek out on more than others? No, I think we're pretty open at this point. I, the first couple just it so happens that they're, you know they're platforms, though they're they are different. Um, we are looking at and we're in talks with um, somebody from the Spork DAO who created a Discord tool um, called Tavern Keeper. That's really cool. Um, he actually did it at uh, the East Denver Hackathon last year. Um, so we're looking at that. I, yeah, there's no real limitations. And we really want this, you know, naturally, since we're just getting started, we're a little more centralized with the three founders, but we really want our community to be the decision makers for where we go next. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have no idea where we're going to end up, but we're super excited to see, see where it goes. That kind of makes it even more exciting, right? You don't know until the next, and then, until the next one comes up. So um, are you headed to ETH Denver this year or in 2023, I should say? Yeah, we are. Awesome. <laughs> Super looking too. forward to it. Yeah, we got our <laughs> tickets. We'll be, uh, you know, in our, so our main project for John and I are the founders of Decentralist.com. So you'll probably find us in some, some Decentralist.com swag, but we're also going to get some Eli5 stickers made. So look for us and come say hi. We would love to meet everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, we should, the, we should definitely get together too and meet up and we could do an in real life charm verse demo and talk DAO stuff. I would love that. It's always fun. <laughs> you know, great meeting people here, but you know, IRL is even better. So I would love that. Um, oh, another thing that was mentioned as far as the bugs, you know, that you can find when you're testing these tools. 
Um, I find that to be one of the most helpful things. I know for our team, if I'm really diving into something, um, I'll catch things that our developers don't catch just because they're not using the tool like I am um, or like you would be. So it really does make sense to say, hey, dig into this tool and use it daily and you'll find all of those bugs that we missed, you know? So um, I think that's a good point. And yeah, what were you going to yeah. say, John? Yeah, no, the, just to the bug point. So uh, the first bug we found Actually, uh, when you were making a proposal on Colony, um, you know, you, you make a proposal and you put like some special notes. Um, those notes were not showing up on the actual proposal once they were written to the blockchain. So people, but you could see the comments. So if you weren't testing that out, you like you wouldn't have even even known about it. Um, you could comment in the comment section, but the actual note for what the proposal was, like something like that, it, it seems like it was a bug that happened after. But uh, one of our members found that. We told the the team, and then uh, you know I think they did a little update on it. So it's it's been really great. Yeah, it's exactly those kind of things. They made one change in code and it accidentally broke something else and you found it and now they fix it. And um, that's why I say really any of these platforms or tools um, to the listeners that you're using, feel free to reach out to these companies and let them know. Um, they will be grateful for it. I, for the most part, I know we are, you know, we'd rather know if something's not working so we can fix it as quickly as possible. Um, well, I don't want to keep you guys all day, but, um, I do want to offer any chance for last shout outs or how can people get involved in this awesome DAO? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have, let's see, uh, our Eli five DAO Twitter handle is in this space. So if you follow, follow us over there or give John and I a follow and reach out, um, and the Eli five DAO Twitter page, we have the links to our, um, where you can find all of our links to Charmverse, uh, Discord, and Colony. Um, our and John and, and uh, my DMs are open, so if you're not sure, or you're getting lost, let us know, um, and we're more than happy to, to help you out. But yeah, that's where you can find us, and we're always open for you know communications, meetings, chats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we love meeting people you know, via Zoom or, like you said, in real life whenever possible, so... Uh, definitely reach out if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing you over there. Yeah. And our, uh, our, uh, we have uh, asynchronous and kind of synchronous, uh, our synchronous like community calls are on Tuesdays. Uh, I think it's one mountain standard time, three uh, Eastern standard time. So we do just like a chat in discord if anybody's needs onboarding help or anything like that. So, yeah. Awesome. Listeners, give them a follow. Again, it's at eli 5 Dow. You can also click their PFPs. Give John and Aaron both a follow. Doing very cool things. I'm really excited to learn more about the tools you're testing out, especially Charmverse. But please, as you're using it, you can reach out to me directly. You can hit us up in the Discord. Let us know what you find, what you want more of, what you're loving. We love the feedback. Um, also after this, I am definitely going to go check out John's article. Um, so if you go to decentralist.com, then go to decentralized diary and you'll find a blog post with nonprofit doubt research that he just put out. I'm really excited to look into that and we'll be checking it out right after this. So I'm glad that you mentioned it. Um, well, John, Aaron, keep doing what you're doing. I'm really excited about it. And thanks for the feedback on Charmverse. I like to know how you're doing, how you're using it. And let's connect after this so we can uh, talk about maybe some of the other capabilities that will streamline some of your processes. Absolutely. That sounds great. And thank you so much for having us. Um, it's been a great chat. Yeah, thanks. If, uh, if, if there was a question, I think you said, Will, uh, I'm willing to take questions if you want to, or if we got to run, we got to run. But uh, No, I yeah. think they abandoned us. I made them wait too long. Oh no, Will! <laughs> Will, but, if you're listening, if you're listening yeah. to this later, give us a give us a DM. We'll answer your question. <laughs> yeah, hit them up with any questions. Hit me up with any questions. And um, yeah, you two have been an absolute pleasure. And good luck with everything. And yeah, and uh, I hope to see you in ETH Denver. Awesome. Absolutely, thank, thank you. you so much. Of course, have a great rest of your day and happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> cheers cheers 2023 here we come let's all go crush it
<laughs> All right, listeners, thanks so much for tuning in and come on back next week for our Twitter space, space with Astrid Park. Um, thanks again to Eli Five Dow. Fantastic Dow. Go check them out. Thanks again, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.